Well, as you know, you know that that provides lots of habitat for your smaller fish to get away from from some of your predator fish. So uh, we're looking at possibly this year. We're fixing to do a, a shock survey. Uh, probably in the next month or two, we're going to begin that on all of our lakes here in the village. And what we'll do is we'll do a survey. We'll see how our fish are growing. Right now, I've got reports that that some of our bass may be stunted due to lack of uh, lack of bait fish. So if we see that, or we see a bunch, you know, we got an overabundance of fish. Uh, you know, I've got money in the budget to stock some of our lakes this year. I was wanting to stock it with Florida string bass, but if we have to, we can we can cut down the on the number of the Florida strain we put in our lakes, and and stock a bunch of bait fish, if that's something that we see that we need. Um, you know, due to uh, overpopulation or due to uh, the stunning of the fish, and. Uh, you know, if you put the bait fish in, of course, you have to have habitat. That's where I think the anglers club, you know, the different clubs in the village, they help us as far as lakes management by providing the, the habitat and, and volunteering the time to ensure that our lakes are have the, have the proper habitat and are, and are good to fish in. And, uh, and so, you know, that's, that's something I'm very thankful of, that we have people that will, that will volunteer to help us do things like that. And... Then the biggest challenge is, like I said, is the lack of the habitat, um, the low harvest rates, and uh, the, the snails, the invasive snails. I'm sure many of you have heard about the snails that we have in Australia and Granada. Uh, I think the number of those, I, I stopped 7,000 sunfish uh, last December, I believe it was, November, November. Uh, we put 7,000 red ear sunfish in in uh, Granada and 8,000 red ear sunfish in Estrella. So those are they call them shell crackers. So I'm hoping that, that you know that's the best way to maintain our snails, the, the invasive snails we have in those lakes. If we can take out the mature snails, you know those red ear sunfish will will eat them while they're you know while they're little in the can and help us keep that population down and maybe take it completely out. So, uh, and I think Don will get ready or sunfish in a little while. But, yeah, I, you know, as far as Lake Superintendent, I really appreciate everything that the, that the Anglers Club, Baycaster Club, Shoreliners Club, you know, there's so many different clubs in the village that help us and, and help our lakes. And we've got some really beautiful lakes. And when we take care of them, we got some good fishing. and. Uh, I just really appreciate all the volunteerism that they do in helping us uh, maintain those lakes and, and ensure that they are they are good for fishing and good for boating and just good to enjoy. And I really appreciate that. Y'all got any, any any questions for me about the lakes? Go ahead. Todd, has there been a decision made on the expansion of the Balboa River? Uh, there hasn't. It's still in it's still still uh, in the works. They're talking about that. <coughs> But there hadn't been a definite decision yet made. Uh, the Cortez boat ramp, I know I've, I've had several calls about it. Won't know when they can fish Cortez again. The Cortez boat ramp had a big void under it. The concrete itself had a, had a huge void underneath the boat ramp. There, there wasn't nothing there but the concrete, just air holding it up. So we went in and we cut that slab out. The, the sidewalk next to it also had a big void under it, so we cut that out. My plan was to go back and form it up, pour concrete, but every time I schedule to pour concrete, it rains the night before and the lake comes up. So, matter of fact, I called the guy yesterday, I was just telling Dave and them that when I left, I, I went by there before I left work yesterday at 4.30, and the lake level was down a foot below my saw cut on the boat ramp. So I called the concrete guy, I said, hey, you know, we're on for in the morning. Let's, you know, we're gonna get this poured in the morning. I get over there at 6.30 this morning, it's three foot above my saw cut. So I have to call him back and say, hey, let's put it off till next week. So I've got the valve wide open on, on, on Lake Cortez. We're still pulling water out of Cortez. Uh, we had a guy that uh, had just built a seawall, and last Thursday night we got the big rain, and his seawall went off into the lake. 
So he called me and said, hey, I got $25,000 laying out in the lake. So we were going to lower the lake about two feet for him to, or his contractor at least, to put some blocks back up and then try to get it raised back up. So, uh, but uh, we are, we, you know, as soon as, soon as we can get this boat ramp poured and that cure for a couple days and we're going to open it back up. And, and I know that the Anglers Club, I believe, has got the habitat you're wanting to put in Cortez. has got it built, ready to go. And uh, the Kiwanis Club is having a fishing derby for the kids at, at Cortez Pavilion uh, April the 19th. But uh, I appreciate every one of you guys. And, and, and like I said, and all the volunteerism work that we get here in the village is it's outstanding. It's outstanding. I thank each one of you. Is there any more questions? Yeah. Tom, are y'all going to do any restocking or crappie in the lakes? Yes. When? Hoping to do it about September. I want to put crappie in, in, in Lake Cortez. First of all, I've got, a, I've got, I'll just be honest with you, I've got $10,000 budgeted for stocking. This is what I've got budgeted for this year. That's for 2023. And that's what Brad had in the seven-year O&M carrying over. And I took on Brad's budget, <coughs> Meredith, that was here before me. So we got $10,000 stocking in, in 2023. And we were going to try to stock some Florida strain bass in some of our lakes. But I said, we'll hold off until we do our fish survey. So I want to get a crappie population up in, in, in a bunch of our lakes. Now here's the problem we have. We go in, we put, let's say for instance, I go in Cortez, which is the one I'm thinking about putting some crop in. We go in Cortez, we spend six, seven thousand dollars stocking cropping in Cortez. Then we get a bunch of people coming in, word of mouth, that hey, they just stocked a bunch of crop in Cortez, and they go in and they just annihilate it. You know, and take them out. That's the problem we have. So uh we are going to put crappie in, and what I'll do is I'll put signs up at the boat ramps. I know they don't always work, but if you can't, you know, catch and release any crappie that you may catch for the first at least four to five years and try to get that crappie population built up because lots of people love to catch crappie. Lots of people love to eat crappie. Hey, I'm the world's worst. I love some crappie. And so, but, uh, but in order to get that, to get that strain built up, we're going to have to let it sit there for for three or four years and let it build build up into that lake. I think that that's something. What happened, from what I can hear, in uh, Lake Sophia, maybe or Estrella, where they put the crappie, they said that people went in and just <laughs> just absolutely annihilated. So, but we are that is that is uh, something I want to do. Why not put a weight limit on? Huh? Why not put a weight? That's, that's something else we can do. Yeah, that's a good idea. Ten inches. You know, ten inches. You know, and, and that's something we can do. Because if I put them in, what I want to do is I want to put, uh, you know, four to six inch crappie in so they'll make it. That's what I've done with my sunfish. I don't want to put little bitty one to two inch fish in because they're not going to make it very long. And, and then you're just throwing money away. And uh, they said most of the time when I talk to the fish farms that if you want to get any fish with any size to it, you got to wait till about September or October to get them because I guess that's just the way that they, they raise them up in the farm. Or the Jay's fish farm where I get it, that's what he said. But we are, we are looking at doing that uh, because, to my knowledge, we don't have very many, right, in, in our lakes. I mean, you guys fish it more than anybody. We don't have many crappie, do we? Certain lakes, there's a few, but uh, we'll keep that a secret of what lakes that is. <laughs> That's for y'all to figure out. <laughs> yeah. So, but but yeah, we we are looking at that. We're gonna we're gonna do a survey, and then I'm gonna take the money I got budgeted after we do our fish survey and see what we need per lake, and then try to try to put that just a little bit here and there until we, you know, where, where we see fit. Anything else? I've got two right here. Real quick, real quick. Sorry, Todd. Yeah. Uh, I know Brad was working with Dana Fish, I don't know, a couple of years ago on buying brood fish. Uh, Golden Shimer Field? Yes. Is that what it was? And we put a bunch in. I don't even remember what place they were. And we were going to do more of that, but then there was a challenge coming through with Damon Fish and the state.
about how we could purchase fish. Did Game and Fish ever get that certified that we could buy it from a Game and Fish certified veteran? I guess they did, because that's where I've been buying them from. I hope I'm doing it legally. <laughs> yeah, uh, because I called uh, I called my contact from Game and Fish Commission and said, hey, I need a list of uh, fish hatcheries for the sunfish I bought. And he sent me a list of certified fish hatcheries, and I've been buying them from Jay's Fish Farm and Yeah, got that yeah. and uh, so I, I guess they got that they got that rectified. And, and he he told me he said I said he said I can get you anything you want. I mean, he's a pretty pretty good size outfit, real real good to deal with. Who, who is that now? Uh, Jay's Fish Farm is who I've been getting from. I mean, who was the who was the director of the game? It used to be Brett Hobbs. That's who I, that, that's him. That's so who I deal with, Brett Hobbs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a real good guy. And a lot of help. Yeah. You know, if I need anything, have any questions about anything, you know, he'll, he's, he's eager to help us in any way that he can. And uh, he's the one who told me about this, this fish, fish farm out there. They're really good people. And, uh, you know, they, they told me they'd help me any way that they could. I'm just kind of looking forward to this survey. We didn't do one last year. And uh, we're going to try to hit every lake this year that we've got. So I'm looking forward to that and, and uh, kind of seeing, seeing what we've got, where we've got them. And see what we need to do. I think I had another. All right, go ahead, right over here. On that survey, like, when are you, when are you doing it? And you, will you publish it somewhere? Yeah, we'll publish it probably April or May. And we'll publish it because we're going to probably be asking for volunteers. <laughs> because, uh, you know, working overnight. And, uh, you know, that the volunteerism that we get doing that is a lot of help. If I could, Todd, if, if you have the opportunity to volunteer, yeah. It is an absolute experience uh, seeing how this operates if you're going to work. Yeah, you will, you will work. It's a lot of work, but it, it's a lot of fun. All right, go ahead, right over here. He asked my question. Oh, he asked the question. Well, dang. All right, he, yeah, here we go. When they spray the shoreline weeds, how long does it take for them to grow back? They don't. They don't, not the rest of that year. Could we put something on the lake's website maybe to kind of try to discourage people from... Well, you know, or, I, or just spray the boat dock and not the whole shoreline? I had, I had Brett Hobbs, as he mentioned before. He came out and uh, we done a... You know, we sat down and talked about... Because I was, I was looking at more as a fisherman point of the lakes. You know, you have to look at the lakes in different, different forms. I, I look at it as a fisherman form. Because I'm just raised from the country, hunting and fishing. You know, that's the way I would want to manage a lake is for my fish. But you have lots of people that want to manage the lake for swimming or for just boating or for just playing around. And they want to look down and they want to see crystal blue water and, you know, and, and golden sea walls and, and all that thing. But truth being, you know, out there. You know, just like Brett told me, he said, the best thing you can do is fertilize your lakes, Todd. He said, you need to fertilize them. If you want your fish population to really grow and you want them to flourish, you need to fertilize your lakes. Well, if you fertilize your lakes, that's going to really make this stuff go to growing around them shorelines. So your people that's wanting golden sea walls and crystal blue waters, they're going to be calling lakes management and they're going to be tearing my butt up. Why did you fertilize? So, you know, you got to kind of meet in the middle there somewhere. And that's that's what we're trying to do, you know, so we can't fertilize our lakes, which they recommend us doing, and I would like to do, but we can't because of, you know, there's other people out there that don't really want that. Yeah. Do you have an estimate of when the uh, Cortez ramp will be functional? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, I'd love it to be right now, but uh, we're going we're gonna to look at it again Monday morning. And uh, we're going to look at it again Monday morning. And if the lake is down below the saw cut, we're going to do it Monday morning. Uh, as soon as the water gets down to where we can pour, we're going to pour. I mean, it's just like it'll be down today and it's raining. And every time it drops down below the saw cut, it's raining. And then I get out there the ne next day when it's not raining, when you can pour it, and it's up above it. It's happened three times now. So... Monday, I told him this morning, we're going to look at it Monday morning and hopefully port Monday. And if we port Monday, then it'll be ready to roll on Wednesday or Thursday. And I'm looking at shutting that valve out there. I hope the guy can get his seawall up. That's the only thing I'm waiting on. And I'm going to shut the valve. We get that. We get Cortez open back up. 
ready to do some, do some whatever you want to do on it. I've been getting calls about people wanting to take their boats out. They're getting anxious. It's pretty weather. And, uh, Absolutely. you know, so we need to try to get that opened up as quick as we can, so we will. Yeah, go ahead. What kind of fertilizer do you put into that? Isn't a contaminant? Well, I don't really know. That's what Brett was going to, we were going to look into that. And Brett was going to find me some stuff that I could do with my lights from the game of fish. But, I mean, that's not even an option here in the village, so he never did, well, I never did pursue it any farther. Uh, you know, that was just mainly to get some of your aquatic growth uh, in the bottom to grow for your, your, your bait fish and your smaller fish to have somewhere to hide. Uh, I mean, you can, they said, they said you could, they, they come out here one year and stock some bait fish some minnows, Brett was telling me, and when you stock them, you, you, they bring this big tanker truck out. I'm sure that many of you people see them stocking lakes, and they shoot these fish through a tube out on the boat ramp. And Brett said they were shooting these fish out on the boat ramp, and he said after just a little bit, said the fish was hitting the water and the bass was eating them. <laughs> so he said, you know, he said, they, I guess they... They seen them coming in, and, and they come up there, and he said it was just a, a feeding frenzy. Just as soon as they hit in the water, they're getting eaten. So, uh, you know, so that was some hundreds. There's several fertilizers out there that you can put in the lakes that can affect your water quality. Right. And the only thing it's for is to increase the plankton in the water so your bait fish will have plankton to eat. That doesn't yeah. really, it doesn't, you might get a little discoloration when you first put it in, but it won't affect your water quality at all. Right. That, that's what he was telling me. You but know. it turns the water green. Yeah, it does turn the water green. You so know. then you don't have that crystal clear water. You don't have that crystal clear water. Any, any more questions? You know, I told them I kind of felt felt uh, like a big dog today. I got to sit with all you great fishermen here. <laughs> so these guys here, they'll teach you how to go catch them fish, I guarantee you. But Don? Uh, thanks, Todd. Thank you. Pleasure being here.